so what we've talked about so far has been about nuclear decay mostly, where you have one unstable isotope that gives off some particles, some radiation, and decays into a slightly smaller um, isotope. What we're going to talk about next is sort of more drastic changes to the nucleus. One of those is nuclear fission. So what does the word fission mean? You guys read that article about nuclear power, so it should have some familiar, familiarity with some of the things we talked about. Brian? Like coming out? Not so much coming out, Willa. It could, but fission itself means, Breaking. yes, breaking, apart. breaking something apart. Fission just means to break something apart. So nuclear fission is the breaking apart of a nucleus of an atom into two smaller nuclei. That's what nuclear fission is, breaking of the nucleus. So here in this diagram, what you have is an Nucleus of uranium-235. And uranium-235, when it's hit with a neutron, will become unstable and then split into two other nuclei, krypton and barium. And in the process, we'll also release three more neutrons. So that is nuclear fission, the splitting of the nucleus. Um, what's that? Good question. They will be released and go somewhere. Now what happens if they hit another uranium-235 atom? That one will split and release what? Uh, more. more neutrons. So you have to change. Yes, uh, and we'll talk about this in a second. So this is the sort of uh, equation showing this. Uranium-235 hit by one neutron will decay and break apart, forming barium-144, krypton-90, and then two more neutrons. This process of fission, of this nucleus splitting, releases a very large amount of heat and energy. And that heat and energy can be turned into something useful, and also be turned into something deadly. Wait, and then. And so, could sort of think about nuclear chemistry starting with Einstein. You know what Einstein's famous equation is? Um, e equals mass times speed of light. Square, good. Yeah. Yes. E equals mc squared. You've probably heard that or seen it around. And those are that's what it stands for. Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. The E stands for energy, the M stands for mass, and C stands for the speed of light. And what this formula really is telling us is that energy and mass are sort of um, interchangeable, can be converted from one to the other. And that's what happens in some of these nuclear reactions, is that a small amount of matter is being transformed into a huge amount of energy. Right? Mass being transformed into energy releases large amounts of energy. And can, in the case of like we were just saying, Willa just said the word, what did you call it when those neutrons hit other uranium atoms? Chain well, yeah, it starts a chain reaction. A chain reaction is when there's a set of very fast, rapid reactions when the product of the reaction starts yet another reaction, which starts even more reactions. And so you have this sort of positive feedback loop where the reaction is increasing at a faster and faster rate. Now, 
if I had just had two or three of those uranium-235 atoms, then that's not enough for this chain reaction to begin. For example, if I took two mouse traps and put them in a box and dropped a ping pong ball on one of them, would the other one necessarily spring? No, it might, but it might not. Or if I put three or four, they probably all wouldn't be sprung. However, if I completely line the bottom with what we call a critical mass of mouse traps, then the reaction will be self-sustaining. It will be a chain reaction which leads to a repeated reaction until all of the fuel is used up. I'm going to show you some of this. Video. off slow, but then as these hit, the next group, you have that chain reaction. Alright, now if you have a chain reaction and a critical mass of fuel, and it's allowed to proceed like this in an uncontrolled way, you could end up with something like this, which is what? Yes, a nuclear explosion. Or, if it's controlled, it can be harnessed to do what? Make energy. Make energy, yes. So we'll talk about both of those things. So a nuclear reactor, a nuclear power plant, is using these principles in a controlled manner to generate electricity. A fair amount of the electricity we use in New York State comes from nuclear generated power. Um, so a nuclear reactor uses a nuclear fuel, uranium usually, allows this fission to happen at a controlled rate, harnesses the heat produced, and uses that heat to generate electricity. Now again, it has to be controlled, and it's controlled with two important parts of the nuclear reactor. The control rods, these are rods of usually cadmium or boron that can absorb neutrons. Because again, the chain reaction of these neutrons is what causes the reaction. And by altering these control rods, we can control the rate of the reaction. The way it works, and it's shown here, so nuclear fuel comes in fuel rods. These rods filled with pellets of uranium. Okay. The control rods go in between the fuel rods. And so by raising these control rods up, it allows neutrons to pass from fuel rod to fuel rod, increasing the rate of the reaction. When these control rods are lowered down, they absorb those neutrons, slowing down the reaction. If they're completely dropped and they separate each of the fuel rods, then they stop the reaction. Okay? So they're an important part. 
<laughs> There's also a moderator, a material that surrounds the control rods and fuel rods that slow down the neutrons, further um, reining in this chain reaction that's taking place with these uranium uh, molecules, atoms. When this reaction is taking place, a large quantity of heat is being generated. And anytime you have heat being generated, you can harness that to make electricity. Basically, all electricity that we use, oh, well, not quite all. Most electricity produced at power plants comes from um, generators. The generator takes movement of a turbine, which generates electricity. Anytime you can move a turbine, you can generate electricity. And so in a nuclear reactor, okay, we have our reactor, we have our control rods, we have our fuel rods. And again, when the reaction is taking place, it generates a great amount of heat. That heat heats up water, which boils, turning into steam. That steam goes through a generator, which spins a turbine, which can make electricity. The water eventually cools down, gets pumped back, heated up, and you have this loop repeating over and over again. Hydroelectric power works in almost in a similar way, although it's water going through a dam that's turning this turbine. Or a wind turbine uses the power of the wind to move this turbine. A gas power generator boil, heats water with natural gas, boils it, and then uses that steam to turn this turbine to create electricity. So they're all using the same basic principle. It's just about how are you spinning this turbine. So heat given off by the reaction changes water to steam. Steam drives that turbine, which generates the electricity in the power plant. There's been a couple, really not, I wouldn't say too many. There's been some bad um, accidents at nuclear power plants. And this is a problem. The fuel rods are extremely radioactive and dangerous. They give off radiation that's dangerous. Okay. Uh, everything that comes into contact with those fuel rods is also radioactive. And um, can I, does anyone know what a name of one major nuclear accident? Anarvar? Fukushima? Yeah, Fukushima. In where? Japan. In Japan. Uh, I don't know, four or five years ago? Maybe, is that right? Do you know the year? Um, it's uh, 2011. Okay, so a little longer, six, seven years ago. But there was a, an earthquake. There's also accompanying that a what? Uh, uh, a tsunami. A tsunami. And the nuclear power plant was inundated was damaged by the earthquake, inundated with seawater, okay? and it caused the safety protocols to break down. Also, also um, due to the nuclear the radiation, the fish in the sea, probably like where the tsunami took place, they, they grew like very large. Oh, really? And they washed up. Yeah, and the effects of this radiation on living things is very bad, right? How do they get ocean water if like the radioactivity probably spreads over? Yeah, because some of the there's contamination in some of the ocean water and some of the surrounding areas. Um, because the tsunami flooded huge areas of land that came into the nuclear power plant. So, Mo how, so how would they get water like the people in that area? Oh, they would have to go elsewhere. It's just a huge humanitarian disaster. So you'd have to get fresh water from places that are not contaminated. Ellen? So Japan had an earthquake, tsunami, and a nuclear like, disaster? Yeah, well, the earthquake basically caused a tsunami and combined, they caused the nuclear meltdown, which was bad. Yeah, so it's sort of all things. Natural chain reaction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so, 
far away was the radius of the radiator? of where what was affected with the radiation? I don't know the exact details. I'm not sure. It's a good question. There have been other now. It's long before you guys were alive, but I was alive. Another one in the Soviet Union. Do you know what that one was called? No, I. But I know what. Yeah, it's in the was it the one in Chernobyl? Chernobyl. That was in. Uh, I believe it's in the Ukraine. Yes. Yeah, but in the yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. And that, again, was a nuclear meltdown, which spread radiation. People died. The area is still dangerous, and, and uh, people don't really, not many people live in that area anymore. So yeah, the uh, uh, problem is with a nuclear power plant can be very dangerous. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. So if there's all these problems, why would we ever use nuclear-powered uh, electrical generation? Well, this amount of nuclear fuel, I'll pass this around, I can see it. This is a, t a tiny little fuel pellet of your, it's not really uranium, but this size pellet of uranium gives as much energy as a whole ton of coal. Okay. So you can get a lot of energy out of a small amount of material in a nuclear power plant, okay? It's the same as three barrels of oil or natural gas. So it provides a lot of energy. Okay. A kilogram of uranium can release 100 trillion joules of energy. That's about 4 million kilograms of coal. So it's a huge amount of energy. Now, what else do you know about these energy sources? Oil, coal, natural gas. Alex? They have like fossil something, which means they'll run out sometime. They're fossil fuels. They will run out sometime. Also, will it? Yes, they release tons and tons of what gas? Burning those fuels. Kind of right? Um, what type of gas? Um, the name of the gas. Uh, uh, mm. <laughs> carbon dioxide. Oh. And carbon dioxide building up in the atmosphere is what is causing climate change and global warming. How much carbon dioxide is released by using nuclear fuel? Zero. Zero. So some people will say the dangers of nuclear energy outweigh the dangers of burning all these fossil fuels. Okay. There are nuclear power plants in New York State, relatively close to us, nine mile points on Oswego. It's really old. It's the second oldest um, nuclear power plant in the country. Yep. Uh, they're usually built along lakes because they need large quantities of fresh water to uh, cool down the water after it turns into steam. When you see these big things, these are cooling towers. This is not smoke. That's just steam. Okay. So people think, oh, there's tons of pollution coming out. There's actually not. The main problem with nuclear power reactor is the waste. I mean, there are obviously the possibility of accidents, but the fuel rods, once they're used up, <laughs> they will remain radioactive for millions of years. And the question becomes, well, what the heck do you do with these things? And there's no good answer to that. Right now, they're mostly just kept on site and just stored away. They're allowed to cool down. Sometimes they're encased in concrete, but they're still radioactive. And we don't have anything we can do, really, to improve upon that. So that's one of the reasons you'll say, well, maybe we should not be using more nuclear power. We have all this radioactive waste and we have no way of getting rid of it. So the benefits though of nuclear power, there are no greenhouse gases released from the um, production of electricity through nuclear power. Once they're going, they're relatively inexpensive to keep running and they produce a huge amount of energy. So what are the downsides? What are some of the cons, reasons people would say we should not be using nuclear energy? Well, uh, the, waste. the waste problems. Also, else? yes, disposing of that. They're very expensive to initially build. It costs billions of dollars to build a brand new nuclear power plant. There's that risk of an accident and the release of 
radioactive uh, pollution into the area around the power plant. So, you know, people argue both ways for this. Some people feel that we should be relying more on nuclear power for the pros. Other people feel it's not worth the risk. Sort of an area of debate. There's no right or wrong answer. Alex? At one point, wouldn't it just like end up not working? Can it still stay for a long time? Yeah, um, scientists believe we have enough uranium on Earth that we can um, could produce nuclear energy for billions of years. No, like, uh, the, radio, the radiation? Oh yeah, they have to. So they do sometimes. Once they are no longer being used, like they're outlived their lifespan, they have to be what's called decommissioned. And it's a huge process. Because all of that, part, all the parts of that power plant that were in contact with the fuel rods and so forth are radioactive. They emit small levels of radiation, and they have to be disposed of in special ways. Anna Barbara? After the Fukushima disaster, did um, Germany, France, and other countries um, try not to, uh, did they thought about Yes. The popularity of nuclear energy has gone up and down since it started being used in the 1950s. During times when oil was very expensive, more nuclear power plants were built. Whenever there's an accident, the number that are planned goes down. And so you have this sort of wavering popularity depending on what's happening in the world. Anna? Yeah, Well, they can't really spray it away. They can like try and contain it or dilute it or put it in an area where it's not going to affect people. Well, and here is what people have proposed. People have proposed building a giant storage area deep within the earth where all of these spent fuel rods would be placed, somewhere that's geologically stable. Um, the problem is nobody wants to do it near them, right? Nobody wants a huge storehouse of nuclear waste in the mountain near their house. And so we have not so far done that. Most of the time, spent fuel rods are just kept on site, right at the nuclear power plant where they were used. So that's a good question. Um, all right. Now, nuclear fusion. So how is fusion different from fission? Amen? Fusion happens in the sun, correct. Well, what else? Well, sort of. They both produce heat. But what is, how about the word itself, fuse? What does it mean to fuse things? So we meant fission meant to split things apart. How about crystal? Yeah, it means to combine things together. So nuclear fusion is when two nuclei actually fuse together. Now, usually this is with very, very small nuclei, like hydrogen. What do you think you'll get if you fuse two hydrogen nuclei together? Helium. But in the process, it releases, again, large amounts of energy. Combining two types of hydrogen forms helium, okay, and also form a neutron. And so, the, yes, I'm always right, this happens in the sun. That's where the sun's energy comes from, fusion. The fusing of hydrogen nuclei to form helium, releasing huge amounts of light and heat and energy. So scientists hope that it would be possible to one day harness this power into a power plant on our feet. All right, we'll finish up tomorrow with all our nuclear weapons as well. Yeah.